Modal jazz, you know, um, we could do a whole course. I'm sure many people have on Miles Davis's uh, effect and role in music. Certainly one of my muses and favorite musicians of all time. And uh, the amount of times he changed the direction of like jazz music is incredible. Uh, what are you going to do when you've got Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie <coughs> blowing over multiple rhythm changes at you know 300 beats per minute? Well, let's step it back, and Miles started playing modal jazz, which is let's play one chord for a long time. So his obviously his most famous composition in this vein is uh, So What? And the solo section is uh, A-A-B-A, -A -A, which means the A section is 16 bars of D minor. That repeats, 16 bars of D minor. And then it goes to 16 bars of E flat minor, and then back to D minor. So A-A-B-A, -A -A, D, D, E flat, D all minor, and we're using the Dorian scale with the major sixth here, which would be a B natural, in the D minor, and in the E flat minor, the same thing, with the C natural. That gives it its real flavor, as opposed to playing the Aeolian uh, minor scale. So um, when you, this gives a real opportunity for bass players to be creative over a long period of time, which, which I really enjoy. And you can also, it's a time where in creating these longer lasting and longer building bass lines, you can sort of play uh, games with yourself, right? So what you want to do is create a pattern. And then you want to, after you've established that pattern, you can slowly um, expand upon it. Right? So say we're in D minor, I would come uh, simply, I think we're going to do in this first example, if we're going to set up first a really easy, like one bar phrase. Right? So that was four bars of basically the same line. Now what we could do is we could play three bars of that line, and on the fourth bar, add something a little different, and then come back to our line. So we could be like. Do it again. Right, now then the next B section, the next A section, I'm sorry, D minor, we can ramp that up and do two bars of our repeated section, and then two bars of something else. So that was a two bar phrase. Right, so that's, and then the next time, you could say maybe start another phrase by playing the same thing up an octave. And adding in some chromatic approach notes, right? Uh, so this is all about when to change the line, but never forgetting that you want to lay down the tonality in a very simple line, because what we're doing is we're, the scale we're using is the D, uh, Dorian, you might think of it as a C major scale starting on the D, because we're not using any sharps or flats, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So another thing we could do is that we talked about playing arpeggios to outline the bass line. The arpeggio for this scale would be the root, the minor third, the fifth, the minor seventh, and the octave. You could put in that major sixth if you want. Those are all guide tones, right? The root, the minor third, the fifth, the minor seventh and the octave. That's what's outlining it, as well as 
the sixth makes the minor scale a Dorian instead of an Aeolian. So, maybe you can move up to outlining chords like that. I've had many jazz teachers who will ask you to walk through chord changes using only chord tones. And, and then you start to see how they're connected when you change chords into coming up to uh, a note from where you end that goes uh, naturally into the, the next section. And you want to pretty much stay with playing the root as far as like how, how long you want to go without playing the root. Maybe two bars, like when we're doing the example of now we're playing a two bar phrase. On that fourth bar, we're playing a minor third, so, but that's one long phrase. I don't think at the top of every bar you need to play the D, but you don't want to stray away from it too far. So that's just some approaches you can take to playing modal jazz, and it's super fun. Like I said, you can play games with yourself where I'm going to play you know, a series of three, and then a two-bar fill, series of fours, and then a three-bar fill, uh, and long form. Uh, as well as obviously listening to what the soloist and what the drummer and what the comping instruments are playing and trying to complement what they are playing and complement the soloist or singer that you're playing with. So uh, let's take a look at uh, playing some muddle jazz and try to keep these uh, ideas in mind when you come to creating your own bass lines. Mm -hmm.